Hello, uh, I'm Shubhra Chakraborty and uh, I'm from Johns Hopkins. And I'll be talking about a uh, rapid and simple molecular diagnostic assay for cholera, which is applicable to endemic countries. And this assay is called RLDT. I'm the last speaker and I will try to keep you awake. So um, as we heard about uh, the diagnostic assays of cholera, um, we know that simple, rapid, sensitive, and specific diagnostic tests for cholera facilitates uh, rapid outbreak responses, like implementing treatment, OCV, and WASH. And also, we need the diagnostic assay um, reliable for reliable surveillance data to guide long-term policies and interventions. So where we are with the current diagnostics of cholera, uh, the clinical diagnostics, the specificity is very low. And as we all learned and uh, from the uh, colleagues from different countries, um, culture, um, it takes two to three days, needs lab facility and trained personnel. PCR, it's not widely used still. It, several methods are there, no standard methods, no validated technique, and need to procure reagents, which is difficult often, and uh, need a competent laboratory support, technical skills, and time consuming. And there are several RDTs, but the uh, um, performance are variable by the site. So uh, we need a better diagnostic assay, which is sensitive and simple. So we developed a rapid loop mediated isothermal amplification based diagnostic test, RLDT. It detects both cholera CTXA gene and O1RFB directly from the stool in less than one hour. And I want to thank Dr. Sauda um, because she brought this up uh, a lamp, which is basically RLDT test. And uh, I would say this is the best recognition uh, that coming from the people who are using it in the field who need this type of assays, and they are telling that this is simple and this should be rolled out. So thank you. So this is how it looks in the kit. Uh, it's a kit-based assay. In the kit, there is a sample preparation tube, uh, which with the buffer, and you just add the stool and then hand mix it uh, and squeeze the bottle to get the liquid out to the second tube and you put it in the heat block for five minutes. So your sample preparation is done. And then you are transferring the sample to the LRTs, that's a lipolyzed reaction tubes. These are unique tubes in the sense that everything, including primer, dye, and all the reagents that are needed for this reaction is already added and lipolyzed. So the end user is not, don't need to add any reagents. They will just add the sample. So what happened with the sharing? Lost your screen for a second. Okay, it's back now. Okay. Okay, so after you add the sample to the LRTs, you put it in a reader. Um, and within 40 minutes, you read the results as positive, negative. And this reader is a handheld battery operated reader. You can actually backpack and take it anywhere you want. Um, since it's a positive, negative, so the end user don't need to decide like if it is positive, negative or um, think about it. So we did extensive performance specification test for this uh, assay. Uh, with analytical sensitivity, specificity, uh, sensitivity range, repeatability, reproducibility, stability. We looked at the stability of this assay and tested for one year. Uh, and the assay is stable uh, at 37 and room temperature for one year. And we tested uh, at 42 for six months and it was stable. Um, and uh, we found the lowest detection limit is four times 10 to the power four CFU per gram of stool, which is around three logs uh, lower than uh, the dipstick. Um, this is um, much more sensitive. Uh, and the LOD, the lowest detection limit is uh, determined as the lowest concentration at which the target could be detected in all 10 runs. And this is with the um, cholera spiked in stool. 
RLDT assay can be performed from fresh stool, frozen stool, dried stool on filter paper, rectal swaps, and from environmental and drinking water. So you name a collection method, RLDT can perform from that. So these are advantages of RLDT. It's simple. RLDT is performed directly from the stool with minimum treatment. And hands-on time is less than five minutes. So there is very minimal chance of contaminations. It can detect both O1 and CTXA. So if there is a non-1, non-139 strain emerging with a CTXA, it can detect that immediately. It's rapid. It takes less than one hour from stool to result. It's sensitive. It's specific. And the dry formulation is uh, making it stable in ambient temperature, avoids maintaining a cold chain, and is mostly electricity free. So there is no need to add any reagents uh, because all the reagents are already added to the tubes and lyophilized. And all reagents and plastics required are provided in the RLDD kit because it's often um, difficult to procure this in the endemic countries. It's easy reading results because it's positive negative with the handheld reader and it's minimum equipment needed, only a heat block and a reader. And it's since it's rapid, uh, you can get the results within uh, one hour. Um, you can then uh, send those samples to, for culture, the positive samples for downstream applications. And the assay is semi-quantitative, so you can have an idea of how many bacteria, cholera bacteria are in this tool. We developed this assay for Shigella, Eta, Campylobacter, Salmonella, Typhi, norovirus is ongoing, and we are expanding it to other infectious diseases. Uh, we are currently working on pediatric tuberculosis. So once a site is trained and has the reader can perform detection of all these pathogens because the assay method is basically same. So for the end user, it's the same assay. So for the field evaluation of RLDT, um, we trained uh, all these field sites and implemented RLDT uh, in several African and uh, Asian countries. So we uh, collaborated with the uh, CIDR, Center for Infectious Disease Research in Zambia, and trained them. And then they tested samples with, um, with RLDT and compared with other assays. And the same uh, happened in India with the uh, Indian Council of Medical Research, National Institute of Cholera and Enteric Disease. In Bangladesh, uh, the partner was ICDDRB. In Uganda, it's a Ministry of Health Laboratory. And in Nigeria, it's uh, Nigeria CDC. And in Burkina Faso, is GRA. And after um, implementing this assay and training them and evaluating with the current assays, uh, it was very successful. And uh, we were very pleased with that. So then um, ciders in Zambia and uh, GRA in Burkina Faso, they used it for implementation for surveillance um, in their country. Uh, they screened uh, like 2,000 children uh, who were uh, coming for with diarrhea to the hospital. They screened them for uh, Itek and Shigella. And in Burkina Faso, uh, 700 children are screened for um, Itek and Shigella. In, um, we are also using this for epidemiology to, studies to enroll children uh, from the hospital. Uh, so in Mirzapur, Bangladesh, I have a study going on uh, funded by NIH. We uh, screened 1,600 children with RLDT. And in Dhaka, Bangladesh, um, ICDGRB, this is uh, Dr. Kadri and Dr. Ed Ryan's study, they are using our RLDT for uh, enrolling children in their study. So they have tested 400 children and compared it with PCR, and it, it's going uh, fantastic. So I will uh, now talk about uh, a single study uh, because there is no time for going through all of the studies. Um, so this is field evaluation of cholera RLDT. Um, this study is funded by Wellcome Trust. It's still ongoing. It's uh, in June, it will end, but most of the field studies are already done. Um, there are three sites, uh, Uganda, uh, it's a national health laboratory, it's a ministry of health, and the PI uh, is Francis uh, Ongole, uh, who is, I think, online uh, in this meeting. And in Bangladesh, it's ICDDRB, it's Dr. Firdosi Kadri's lab, and I think Dr. Asharof uh, Islam Khan is here. Uh, 
Um, and in Nigeria, it's Nigeria CDC and Dr. Tochi Okwar uh, is the PI. We also added another site, <clears throat> India, with the National Institute of Cholera and Enteric Disease. And the PI is uh, Shantadatto and uh, Ashish Mukhopadhyay. Um, so, um, and this is funded by NIH. Uh, I don't have uh, time to present the results uh, by site, but what I did is combined all the results. Um, so the total samples were 665. And uh, so this is how it uh, looked for the results. This is a histogram of the percentages of samples positive for cholera by each method of detection. So with culture, there were 39.2% of the samples were positive for cholera. With dipstick, it was 37.4%. With PCR, it was 51%. And with RLDT, it was 52.7%. So there were 13.5% more samples detected by RLDT compared to culture. Um, and there is a slight difference of RLDT to PCR. Um, so when looking at the sensitivity specificity, uh, culture versus RLDT, out of 665 samples tested in the four sites, all culture positives were also positive by RLDT except eight. So that gave a sensitivity of 97%. But out of those eight samples, five were also negative by PCR. So we don't know what happened to those samples. Um, why um, culture was uh, positive, but uh, PCR and RLDT both were negative. Um, we are looking into it, but if you take out those five samples, and then the sensitivity will be 99%. And the specificity is expected to be low because culture is less sensitive than RLDT, and it's 79%. Looking at the PCR versus RLDT, the sensitivity was 97% and specificity was 93%. And I want to bring this up um, about PCR. We talked about, a, about this a lot. Um, so this PCR was done uh, with stool on filter paper, which is less sensitive than RLDT because RLDT, the stool processing is more, um, gives more purified um, sample. But the other thing is um, we first used uh, the protocol of PCR because there is no standard method. We used um, the primers that was published by Hoshino et al. And uh, we had uh, a handful of samples which were PCR negative, but RLDT positive. So we wanted to see like these are actually false positive or these are real positives for the RLDT. So we then used uh, on those samples, we tested with um, the primers that was published by uh, Nandi et al. And there were um, many samples that was previously negative by the other protocol, other primer came positive. So we need to be careful of using which PCR method we are using and which primers we are using. Uh, so those needs to be standardized before even using uh, PCR. And then in um, Bangladesh, uh, in ICDDRB, it's a very sophisticated lab, so uh, they could isolate the DNA and uh, do the PCR on those samples which were um, RLDD positive and PCR negative. So uh, they were, um, they matched very well because that was more sensitive. So overall, like PCR and RLDT um, worked pretty uh, good with uh, and uh, matched the results. On the other hand, in dipstick versus other assays, we had 33 samples only negative by dipstick, where all of the other assays were positive for these samples. Four samples only positive by dipstick. And you need to keep in mind that these are the national labs, the reference laboratories. So since we don't have a real gold standard, um, so we used a couple of statistics to do a pairwise comparison between RLDT and other three methods where you don't need gold standard. So culture versus RLDT performed uh, good. It's substantial agreement. Uh, dipstick versus RLDT is a little uh, lower. It's 0.62, uh, still substantial agreement, but PCR versus RLDT is more than almost perfect agreement. 
So I talked about the phase one of this study where um, from J2, we went to the um, central lab of the countries, uh, Nigeria, Uganda, and Bangladesh to train them. Um, but in the second phase, the central laboratory then went to two health facilities in each country to train them. So this, is, this was a decentralization approach. And in Nigeria, uh, the hospitals were uh, General Hospital Toro and State Specialist Hospital Bauchi, which are northern states, and uh, these are not very safe to work in. Um, and uh, these are also, um, most of the outbreaks happen in this region. In Uganda, it's the um, Naivel uh, Health Complex and uh, Yangali Health Complex, which are refugee areas. And in Bangladesh, it's Naranganj Health Complex and ICDRB Hospital. These are some pictures from the training. Um, the left is the NCDC lab, the Nigeria CDC lab, where um, Mirza from my lab uh, went there to train them. That's the training picture. And then the NCDC staff then trained uh, Toro and Balchi hospitals. And those are the pictures from there. And in Balchi, they are uh, performing um, the RLDT in that hospital. This is a picture from uh, Bangladesh and how it looks actually. Uh, so in the left, you can see the diarrhea ward where patients are admitted. And in the right, there is the RLDT testing room. So you can get the samples from the patient ward and bring it to the RLDT testing room and test it. And this is what is in, how it looks inside uh, the, uh, where the RLDT test was done. So that's the RLDT reader and RLDT sample preparation station. So basically you don't need a lab, you can do it anywhere you want. And Dr. Ashraful Khan actually led this part of the study. Uh, so he can tell you um, more about this if you want to know. And uh, so the performance of the health uh, complex were really good. Um, there were 15% of the samples sent back to the central lab and they retested uh, the RLDT and compared the performance of the health complex. So uh, those were very satisfactory. Um, so we are happy about it. So in the summary, um, RLDT is a simple assay can be applied to the endemic countries. RLDT is more sensitive than RDTs and culture. RLDT exhibited excellent and sufficient sensitivity and specificity for detection of cholera. RLDT could be implemented at the primary healthcare facilities that we have shown. And RLDT warrants broader application and evaluation as a culture independent, simple and rapid diagnostic test. And RLDT is ready for large scale production. So uh, before ending, I want to uh, just open this up for um, thinking and discussing um, about this. This, So this culture, um, we talked about this, the quality of culture varies by sites. And uh, we faced the challenge in this study, it's in uh, Nigeria, um, NCDC, there were a um, handful of samples which were culture positive, but all of the other assays were negative. And when uh, they retested those isolates, those came negative. So there are still much work to be done to uh, make it better, the culture process, um, more training or um, need to see where uh, the problems are. Uh, and we know that lateral flow RDT assays have variable sensitivity specificity. Even in our uh, study, there were 33 samples uh, that were um, falsely uh, negative. Um, and on the other hand, PCR has uh, needs a lot of equipments. You cannot do it outside of the laboratory. Um, and not only that, if you have equipment, um, there are a lot of steps and uh, so plenty of uh, space to make mistakes and there is no standard protocol. And the other problem that I want to bring it up and haven't been discussed in this meeting is there will be always a handful of samples that are very faint bands or faint bands. And it's very difficult for the end users to know if these are positives or not. And when you repeat them, some of them come positive and some of them not. And these are problem for cholera PCR in all the labs, I think. Um, and the qPCR is the 
I mean, you have equipment, but there are contamination problems and we talked about it. On the other hand, the RLDD is simple. It only need a heat block and a reader and uh, it's rapid. Um, it needs a very minimal five minutes of hands-on time. But even being a simple assay, it uh, is very sensitive and the sensitivity is comparable to qPCR. And we, we compared with qPCR, um, the LOD is the same. So with that, I will leave it here to think about it. Maybe RLDT could um, be used uh, in um, field sites and also in the lab, um, but that's uh, for discussion. I want to thank my lab uh, folks and Dr. David Sack for his support and uh, all the collaborators who are who actually did the work. And uh, I really appreciate their dedication and uh, hard work. And I want to thank all the funders for this study. Thank you. Thanks, Shubra. I just wanted to point you out before you get off to look at the chat. I know there's a couple of questions there for you, but we're running um, a little bit over. So if anybody, uh, so you can contact the people in the chat, but does anybody in the room have a question before we let you go? Go ahead. you. Uh, nice presentation. I wanted to know the what is the cost per test using your assay and how much is the reader? I know the hater doesn't cost that much, but the reader may. Yeah, the test doesn't cost that much. I mean, it depends on how many you are procuring because it goes in tier. Um, so it is pretty comparable with um, other assays. Um, the reader cost a little bit more. Um, it's around 7,000 um, currently, but they are making, a, it is commercially available and they're making a next batch of like a new model from next year, which will be a lower price. But on the other hand, I want to mention <clears throat> that um, this machine can be used for <clears throat> other targets also, other pathogens. Can I just ask quickly, Shubra, what, what is the supply chain for RLDTs? So it's currently not commercialized, but we are in the process. <clears throat> um, I have uh, partnered with um, a CRO, which, uh, sorry, <coughs> Um, which can uh, make uh, in millions. And this will be under CGMP facility. But the commercialization is in process. There's a quick follow-up question. Is your reader battery powered? It's a battery powered, yes. So you don't need electricity. And it also has a barcode uh, to get the program in. So the end user don't have to uh, put the program like the PCR machine. Thank you. 